Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we come before you this morning to witness a study in your Holy Passover, uh, a festival that, Lord, that you established in the beginning, some 4,300 years ago, with your children of Israel. I ask, Lord, for wisdom today, for ears to be opened, eyes to see the glorious shadows and types, Lord, that you have placed within this uh, Jewish study of the Passover. So fill us with your wisdom this morning. We ask it in the precious name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I welcome you this morning to uh, take time on your schedules to be here to, uh, to learn uh, about this, this service called the Passover. And some, uh, some of us know all about the Passover, and some of us maybe have uh, tidbits of, uh, of uh, information about the Passover. What I'm going to do today is try to show you in a, uh, not a, in a maybe a rapid sort of way, a overview of what happens at a, at a uh, traditional Jewish household on the Feast of Passover. Uh, they celebrate this every year. And uh, it's the first great feast that God ordained uh, for the Jews to celebrate uh, out of the Old Testament, of course. But if you want further information, and I'll give you a little background on the, on the Passover as we get deeper into the study, but if you really want to know more about what God said about this, I would go into Exodus chapter 12. If you look in Exodus 12 to see where God spoke to Moses and told him, yea, verily, and do these things. So, probably the burning question in your heart right now is why? Why should we learn this? Why should we go well, out our, our busy schedules to take this, uh, this service of Passover and look at it? Well, the Lord, when He was here, the Lord Jesus Christ, when He was here, He was Jewish. He was of the tribe of Judah. What did He do? He followed the law. And so I guess, unless you can uh, contradict this statement, he probably celebrated the Passover as a child with his family. John 5.39, it says, You search the Scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is these that bear witness of me, saith the Lord. So even an Old Testament ritual called the Passover, we can see the Lord in it. And that's my job today is to reveal Jesus Christ in this Passover study. It is a living picture of salvation. Can you say one? How is that? How? Well, bear with me, please. I'm going to be using uh, some New Testament scriptures and some Old Testament scriptures this morning to. Uh, validate the things I say not because don't believe me but please believe the word of God things uh, it says in Colossians 2.17 uh, things that are a mere shadow of what is to come but the substance belongs to Christ I hope that scripture penetrates your heart these substances we'll be talking about today really belong to Christ also, if we are evangelists and we go forth and proclaim the gospel of Christ, maybe we'd be a better witness if we ever were called by the Holy Spirit to witness the Jewish people. We have a better understanding of what they do and why they do it. And also you would get an idea of the blindness that they have and how I will reveal things to you today that they should know but have turned a blind eye to and closed the ear to. Romans 2.29 validates that. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that which is of the heart, by the Spirit, not by the letter, and his praise is not from men, but from God. So he asks, who are the real Jews today? It is not a nationalism that I speak of, but it is a heart conversion, a circumcision of the heart makes you a true Jew. I imagine when Paul said that, 
he would run out of the synagogues or run out of the temple because uh, in the world, nationalism is all around us. And it's a hard thing to, to combat. Now, I, I encourage you to read the Old Testament. It is relevant to today. In Romans 15.4, For what was, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. So it talks about what was written in earlier times. And of course, this was written in earlier times. Well, this is celebrated in the month of Nisan. And but before they can celebrate it, there has to be some preparation. Uh, on the 10th day of Nisan, they have to find a, a perfect sacrifice, a spotless sacrifice, and, and quarantine it for a couple days and make sure that it is truly spotless. And then, the day before, or the 13th day of Nisan, they would purge out the house of all leaven. And there's a little ceremony that the father does with the children and the family. They go around looking for cookie crumbs or cake crumbs or bread crumbs in the house the father would take a, a spoon and a feather and he would go around and they'd, maybe the mother had hidden some crumbs around the house and they have to go seek them out, almost like looking for Easter eggs. But there, it's a little game they made out of it so the children would adapt and learn and he'd sweep up all this leaven and they would take it out and they'd burn it in fire and it, they, it'd be consumed in fire. So the house would be purged of the leaven. And so if you all with spiritual eyes and ears hearts open to hear the word of God, is that not what the Lord commands of us? To purge out the leaven out of our temples. And so the Jews actually do it. They, in, in a ritualistic form, they go around and they purge out the leaven and it's burned up. Uh, I think about leaven and what it means to, to the Lord. And God hates some things and he says it in Proverbs chapter 6. And one of the things he hates is haughty eyes, a proud look. He hates that. He loves humility and a contrite heart. 1 Corinthians 5.8 talks about no leaven. Uh, a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. Do not have the leaven of the Pharisees he talks about. And also in contrast to that, Jesus Christ said one time, the kingdom of God is like leaven. Now he's not talking about it being sinful. But he's talking about the way leaven operates within a lump of dough. A little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. And so, the antithesis of that is a little bit of leaven, the good leaven, the leaven of Christ would leaven the whole lump. If you could stay with me on this talk. So, sundown starts the Jewish day. You say, well, why not the sunrise? Because God ordained it. In Genesis chapter 1, 5, He talked about it was night, then it was day. So He's ordained that the night begins today. And even in the Orthodox Church, our day begins in the evening. It's a similarity to the Jewish faith. We have Vespers. That's the beginning. That's the preparation for the next, for the next day that comes upon us. You see, the Jews are supposed to worship one God, a monotheistic faith. And so by starting at sundown and the sun has gone away, all they have is a moon. So in the days, in the early days, there was sun worship going on. So if there's no sun up, how could you worship it? So to help protect them, God says, you start your day in the evening. Now, like I said, it's this feast is celebrated on the 14th day of Nisan. Well, we don't know that month in our calendar. That was a Babylonian tag given to that month. But really, it's all about, in our calendar, our modern calendar today, uh, on March 17th, was the new moon. March 31st was the full moon. And that's how the Jews know when to celebrate this feast of Passover. They would wait to the 
spring, the equinox, and then they would watch for the moon. And when they saw the new moon, which you can't see, they would start counting. And they had 14 days to the full moon, and they'd be prepared. So they didn't need a, really a calendar. They would be under a lunar cycle, a 28-day cycle. And even the moon, it says in Psalms 104.19, I can read that to you. What I'm doing is laying a foundation here before we really get into the service of it. And I'm going to abbreviate the service because we'd be here for six hours if it was a full Passover. Psalm 104.19, it's just a half a sentence here. It says, He made the moon for the seasons. What seasons are we talking about? Well, the Lord put forth seven holy convocations, holy feasts, in Leviticus 23. This would be the first one. This is the, the feast of feasts. This is the beginning. This, If you read in Exodus 12, when God told Moses, this is your beginning of your calendar, right here. This, not Rosh Hashanah, Passover. Why do they call Rosh Hashanah the new year? When this begins their new year, something's changed. It's an oldest feast, 4,300 years plus. 4,300 years, you can think how long ago they celebrated their first Passover. You see I'm dressed in kind of a strange garb. This is called a kittle. It's a white robe, a belt, a little hat. And usually the father of the family that would leave Passover would wear this. And it's a symbol of purity. You see the table set in white, white plates. Um, you see, uh, this, I'll talk more about this in a moment. Uh, we have silver on the table, which is a, a, a material of redemption. Uh, different foods are placed in the Seder plate. We have a, an empty chair with soft cushions in it. I'll talk about that more in a moment. We have wine and bread, candles. Let the white robe speak of the purity in Isaiah 61.10. We read about that. He talks about putting on the white linen. Uh, Ezekiel 44.17-19 also uh, reinforces Isaiah by talking about uh, when you appear before the Lord, this is talking about the temple that is written in Ezekiel, that you do not appear in wool, but you appear in white linen. The uh, Lord didn't want to see any sweat in this temple. He, he wanted to see uh, a sweat equals work. And, and if you're resting, he doesn't want to see that kind of fatigue on you because you're supposed to be resting in him. Well, also we read in Revelation, Revelation 19.8 about the saints will be clothed in white linen. So there we have a fulfillment of prophecy too. We see it written in the old saints, and we see it written in the new covenant about the white. So that's what this is all about, why the table is decked out in the white, uh, the plates. Uh, even all the furnishings they would use for this service are only used for Passover, not mixed with anything else. It's a totally sanctified setup just for that event.